Alrighty, can everybody hear me all right? Yes. Cool. All right, hi everyone. Welcome to the Energy Storage Market Series. My name is Kyle Pease. I'm a sales and design engineer here at Renview. Today we are going to be hearing from Daniel Garcia, sales director at GrowWatt, and he will tell us about their inverters and energy storage solutions. Before we dive in, and while we're waiting for more people to join, I'd like to give a little background on Renview as well as some of the products and services we offer. Renview is a US-based solar equipment distributor. We've been in the industry for over a decade and we currently have fulfillment facilities in California, New Jersey, and Texas. Myself and the rest of our sales staff all have backgrounds within engineering or solar installation to provide you with the best sales service. For those interested in GrowOut, we're offering a $250 gift card when buying an inverter and battery. Just email into our sales team with your order number to apply the discount. In addition to Grow Out, I'd like to take a moment to spotlight a few of our other popular products. Solark is another high demand hybrid inverter manufacturer. We keep their 8K, 12K, and 12K EMP on the shelf, and we can take pre orders now on their 15Ks. These inverters pair great with home grid and fortress battery banks. For panels, we also have on the shelf multiple options such as the Aeon Rise 330 watt black on black modules, as well as Hyundai 390 watt and Recom 380 watts, and a large selection incoming. For microinverters, we carry Enphase, AP Systems, and an exciting new option we've now added Generac to our portfolio. This includes their microinverters as well as the rest of their lineup. So if you're looking to add a generator backup uh, to your system as well, just let us know. Uh, and check our commercial price list for large volume options, our upcoming offerings of solar modules. Uh, we'll share this link in the chat. It's a good one to bookmark. We update it regularly so you can find the latest deals on there for bulk orders. There's also an ESS tab, uh, which shows options for inverters, uh, some price comparisons uh, with total cost, cost per kilowatt hour, and a number of other parameters to help you choose. Also take a minute here to mention our Blickier residential carport offering. This is a great way to expand existing solar systems or as an alternative solution when you aren't able to install solar on your existing roof. Shown here is a two car carport. There are also options for one car and for a tandem solution, which has a shared columns so you can connect multiple uh, two car solutions uh, as you need to fill up uh, as many spaces as you're looking for beyond those two cars. Uh, it is designed to be assembled by a crew of two. It doesn't require any specialized or heavy tables to install and is DIY friendly. This is a solar structure, so it's eligible for the extended 26% ITC. The carport is supplied with an iron ridge racking system and under panel clamps. Uh, so it accepts any modular inverter you want when combined with the uh, EPDM T gasket, that surface will become watertight. You can add a decorative. Um, you can add a decorative mesh to hide the solar components and electronics beneath, as well as this, and add on uh, safety solar lights uh, to the front columns without uh, running any wires or drilling any holes. Depending on your local AHJ requirements, you can run all of the wiring through the car park columns without external conduit. EV chargers are an excellent addition, and the carport back columns have pre-drilled holes to install the NLX juice box chargers and cables. It is designed and fabricated in Texas and comes with a 25-year warranty. Webinar froze here, just a moment. There we go. Structure is stamped by a Texas structural PE. Uh, you can add up to 24 modules in a four by six array. And the basic load capacities are 35 PSF snow load, which can be upgraded to 55 or 65 if you need, and has 175 mile per hour wind load, seismic design category E. The two car cart port is 18 feet wide and 18 feet dip and deep with a nine and a half foot clearance and comes with five degrees of tilt. You can find a 3D model of both the standalone carport and tandem solution on the Booker website. We'll share a link in the chat if you want to play with it and see the different components. Oh, you can also access online uh, our online design and quote tool from our homepage, which looks like this. 
First, select the system type and components you'd like to see on your quote. Then choose your panel. Next, configure your racking system from a wide range of options. And on the left side, you will see the bill of materials building up when you're logged into your account. Uh, prices will change as you edit your system configuration. So this is a great way to compare the cost of different options in real time. Once you've selected your racking, then you can then choose your inverters. And energy storage if you choose. As well as rapid shutdown or optimizers. On the last selection page, you can add balance of system, disconnects, EV chargers, and a permit plan set if you like. And then you'll get a quote number, email in to our sales team. Myself or one of my colleagues will review the bill of materials and weigh in with insight on the configuration as well as availability. We're available to answer any questions you may have as well. You can also download a PDF for your reference in the future. All right, if you have any questions about these products or about GrowLot while Daniel is presenting, please feel free to ask in the Q&A section and we will get to the questions at the end of the webinar during the Q&A session. Please do not use the chat feature for questions as it will be hard to sort through them there. It's fine to add comments in that chat, about the presentation, just note we won't be actively monitoring it. You can also email our sales team at info at remedy.com for more information and pricing. We also have recordings of our previous webinars on the Remview YouTube channel if you'd like to take a look at any of those. The webinar is being recorded and we'll send you a link in a follow-up email. All right, we're about to get started here. I'm going to hand it over to Daniel. All right. All right, thank you, Kyle. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Renview for uh, hosting this event and coordinating it. Um, uh, so far, it looks like we have you know, quite a bit of attendees. Um, so my name is Daniel Garcia. I'm the sales director uh, for GrowWatt. I've been with GrowWatt for almost seven years now. Um, I have a bit of an ba uh, engineering background as well. So today I'm gonna be covering a few different presentations, uh, quickly go through a company presentation, an introduction, and then which will be followed up by the installation guide for our current version and then our whole home backup as well. So you guys can see my screen now? Yep, looks okay. great. Uh, so GrowWatt's uh, vision is dedicated to becoming the world's largest supplier of smart energy solutions. Um, we have a quite a, uh, you know, a wide product line uh, that covers PV inverters, energy storage, microgrid systems, and smart energy management. Uh, here's some of the milestones of our history. It was founded in 2010. Uh, by 2016, we maintained number one residential PV inverter uh, brand in China. And in 2019, we were recognized by Wood McKinsey as the top two hybrid storage inverter supplier. Um, in 2020, we actually opened up our new uh, manufacturing plant, which has over a 20 gigawatt annual capacity. And in 2021, um, we were able to achieve the, the largest residential PV inverter supplier by IHS market in terms of megawatts. 
here's some of the growth that we've seen over the years in terms of megawatts shipped and as uh, in terms of uh, revenue growth as well. Uh, you can see since 2016, we've had substantial growth um, with the exception of 2018. And the reason for that was for previously, previous to the 2018, we were actually um, had a, most of our sales were in China. So that year uh, we switched over to the overseas market and then, um, you know, had an increase in sales and volumes in the overseas market. Uh, here's some of the, the global leading uh, PV industry statistics. Um, like I just mentioned in 2021, according to IHS, we were recognized as the top uh, residential inverter supplier. Uh, let me get my annotate tool. Um, and we're also recognized by IHS market as a top five commercial um, inverter supplier in terms of megawatts as well. And in terms of hybrid, we're actually number two. Um, and we're fully confident that we're actually going to reach top um, hybrid inverter uh, manufacturer by 2022 as well. Here's some of the global number one shipments um, in terms of top um, ratings top one, two, or three in terms of countries. Some global top brands by um, EUPD. And one of the reasons why we've had such success um, in the recent years is because uh, we allocate over 10% of our sales revenue uh, year over year um, in, back into our research and development. Um, and which has been over 70 million um, USD since 2016. We recently established a research center in Nas uh, National Electric Power Conversion and Control, and we have um, uh, set up a joint lab with Texas Instruments as well. Um, like I mentioned, this is our new 20 gigawatt annual production um, capacity manufacturing center, which uh, the previous one was actually located in Shenzhen. Um, and we've relocated to Weizhou, which is about a 45 minute drive from Shenzhen. It's over 200,000 meters square. Here's some of the global offices and warehouses that we have throughout the globe. So now starting to cover the different products that we offer. Um, they're broken up into three uh, different uh, solutions. It's residential, commercial, um, CNI space, and then utility. So here's some of the residential. Um, now keep in mind, so GrowWatt has tons of different products that we offer globally. These products that I'm going to be covering all um, are for the U.S. market that primarily all have UL certification. Uh, starting with the single phase on the left um, from uh, 750 watts to 3.3 3 um, is the MIC, then the MIN from 2.5 to 6, then 7 to 10. Uh, these are these are just grid tie inverters on the left, and then these are battery ready inverters on the right, which is um, the min three to 7.6 is a smaller footprint and the 8.2 to 11.4 is a larger footprint with four MPPTs. Um, here's some other commercial and industrial inverters. Uh, the MAC from 10 to 36 on the left is a 208 three phase solution. The MAC 50 to 70K is a 480 uh, three-phase solution. And then these, um, the MAC series um, is currently IEC certified, but we are in the process of certifying the MAX 125 to 150, which should be finished by Q3 of this year. And our utility on the right is the MAX 185 to 253 kilowatt. Uh, we recently launched our EV chargers, um, which are also in the UL certification process. Um, we have um, level one, two, and three, um, starting with the, with the level one on the left, level two, and level three. Uh, these should be available with UL certification by Q4 of this year. So here's some of the res residential energy storage products that we offer with UL certification. On the left-hand side is actually our first version that we released at a 48 volt uh, battery solution, which is compatible with our 48 volt batteries, uh, the ARC or the AXE, and as well as lead acid. 
Um, this is a product that's primarily uh, very popular in Latin America for us, just because of um, you know the smaller size uh, capacity as well as um, the compatibility with lead acid, still which still is being used a ton in Latin America. Um, the single phase uh, battery ready inverter that I mentioned is now 400 volt solution, which was launched in la uh, last year in January, um, which is only compatible currently with our ARO battery, which you see on the bottom. Now going on to the microgrid systems, which has become um, pretty popular over the years. Uh, we have a few different options, residential off-grid systems, um, are like I mentioned, are, are very popular now for the DIY uh, community. So we have a couple of different options. The IEC certified was the first um, options that we had on the top. And we recently released all of the same models with UL certification this year. Um, so we have, you know, 110 output, 230 output, split phase output with integrated transformers. That's why you see that these are a little bit larger. Um, and they're compatible with the ARK and AXC. These are all 48 volt solutions. Uh, for microgrid systems, we actually also have um, our new commercial uh, line that we just recently released um, and will be available in Q3 of this year with UL certification. Um, it's three phase, uh, 480 volt, and it's from 50 to 100K at the moment, and it's gonna be compatible with our a APX battery, which is a uh, high voltage um, battery as well, 400 volts. Um, we recently released this new product, which is a portable uh, power station, which has gotten ton tons of interest. Um, it, it just got launched, it's in mass production now, so we should start um, uh, seeing the product here in the US uh, more than likely by uh, August. Um, there's two different footprints now. It's 1.5 and 2 kilowatt, and then uh, the larger, which would, uh, which will probably be available next year. So smart energy management products, all of our inverters, the battery ready in specific, all come integrated with Wi-Fi internally. Uh, the products that do not have the integrated monitoring have different options, depending if it's commercial or residential. You have the plug and play devices on the left that just plug into the bottom of the inverter, then the Shine Master for commercial. And we also have a smart energy management systems to manage uh, zero export and auto consumption. And then our smart monitoring platforms. Um, there's three different um, uh, monitoring platforms that we use. It's Shine Phone app, then the server, and then an OSS, uh, which is used for uh, distribution or installation accounts. So here's some of the smart home products that we actually offer as well. Um, this is uh, already released in Europe, which will uh, soon be released in the US as well. We have smart thermostats, um, smart air conditioning, uh, EV chargers. Um, so there's, uh, there's tons of different products for the home that we're gonna also offer for the US, which you see here. Uh, so here's some of the installations that we have in the U.S. for the products, uh, the battery ready specific products. So the, here's just the PV installation that you see. Um, here you can see uh, inverter, ATS, um, and battery. So this home actually has uh, two inverters and three batteries on it. Here's another installation um, that we actually had a, a, an installer do as a mock-up inside of their facility. Here's our off-grid units. And here's some of our commercial installations as well. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and start with the next presentation. And as Kyle mentioned, um, anybody that has a question, we're gonna have a Q&A that follows this. So we can get all your questions answered. I'm sure you guys will have some. All right, you guys can see my screen now. Looks good. Okay. So here's uh, our new solution. As I mentioned, it's a battery ready inverter. Uh, what that means is that the inverter can be installed as a standalone PV inverter and give you the option of a few different applications um, that include storage. Uh, so here on the left hand side, uh, one second. 
Here on the left, you'll see just a standard uh, PV installation. And then on the right, you'll see uh, just the inverter and battery, which is just set up for time of use. Uh, I won't give you the off-grid uh, backup function. Um, in order for the off-grid backup function, you need the ATS. Right, so it's inverter. ATS and the smart meter, which measures the current and uh, voltage. The reason you need the ATS is for the switching. So there's an integrated automatic transfer switch and, um, and it, it actually creates a neutral for the off-grid output. Um, and here on the right, we'll cover this in the next slide is our new whole home backup solution. So the main difference you guys can see here is that this is a gateway which is connected to the inverter as um, where essentially it's the same as the ATS. However, this ATS is now before the main panel. So when the grid fails, it's gonna switch off from the main panel, from the grid and essentially create um, this as a sub panel. So here's some of the characteristics of the of our inverter. It's from three to 7.6, as I mentioned, in the smaller footprint, and then from 8.2 to 11.4. Currently, it's only DC uh, couple, coupleable, but in our next version, it's actually gonna have the AC coupling function as well. Um, integrated EMS software to support multiple EMS modes, self-consumption, time of use, off-grid, and zero export. Um, it has integrated AFCI, uh, third-party um, rapid shutdown transmitter integrated, um, which is usually for the most part Tygo, uh, built-in Wi-Fi LAN communication, um, and its footprint is quite small, uh, the smaller footprint being 32 pounds and the larger 45 pounds, so one person can install it without any issues. So with our battery solution, um, this is battery, this is a, you know, very important because we get tons of questions regarding this. Uh, the battery cabinet that you see here is a nine, is an RO 9.9 uh, cabinet. That same RO has three battery slot expansion, uh, or three battery expansion slots inside of it, which fit this battery module. When it's shipped, it's shipped separately. The reason for that is because, you know, if, if the battery modules were to be inside of the battery cabinet, it would get quite um, heavy to move around and it gives you different configuration options with the same cabinet. So uh, it's a nominal voltage of 400, built-in BDC bidirectional converter, NEMA 4X rated, uh, fully uh, UL 9540 um, certified as well. And then you can see here the battery modules voltage is at 51. So this BDC that's built in is gonna increase each of these battery modules from 51 to the, the 400 volts uh, nominal uh, voltage that the system runs at. Uh, each battery module is at 3.3 kilowatt hours. So you can uh, configure from 6.6, 9.0. This is being two modules, three modules, four, five, and six modules. It has 10 year warranty at 6,000 cycles and it's LFP chemistry. Um, here's a little comparison between LFP and NMC. Um, you know, it seems that the industry is switching from NMC, NMC previously to the LFP. Um, and that's for, um, you know, reliability and, and, and primarily for safety. Um, you can see most of, most of the LFP characteristics are, um, you know, are, are improved over the NMC chemistry. Um, and like I said, the most important part being the thermal runaway, which you can see is, is, um, is much higher than the NMC. And then the operating temperature, which is also important for those areas where they're installed in um, you know, hotter temperatures or colder temperatures as well. So here is the cabinet. So you guys can get a better idea of how um, it looks. So here you can see the power module BDC converter then each, there's one battery at the top, which is battery one, battery two, battery three, this being the back, the front. And then when you uh, connect multiple inverter or battery systems to increase the capacity, uh, the connections is made from the cabinet on the right to the, to the uh, cabinet on the left. Uh, here's the third component. So we first uh, named the inverter, the battery, the third component being the smart meter. The smart meter, um, like I mentioned, is the voltage and current sensing. It comes with two CTs, which you, it, for the most part is going to be installed inside of the um, 
main distribution panel at the home. The ATS being um, the fourth component, um, like I mentioned, it has two functions. It's an automatic transfer switch, which switches from grid to off-grid mode. And um, it creates a neutral as well. So it's, a, it's an auto-forming transformer. Uh, here's the application that you guys uh, can use. There's actually two of them. Um, one is a Shine tool and one is a Shine phone, and it's available for Android and iOS. Um, and the same user login information, you can see which gives you, uh, you know, tons of more data than the application would be through the server, which is server.robot.com. Um, here's our um, support system that we have for the US uh, for service. And we're just gonna cover the installation process. Now, here's a quick diagram which shows you um, the full system. So you have the inverter. This is, uh, keep in mind, this is a partial home. So the inverter, battery, ATS, and smart meter with two CTs, which I mentioned are installed in the main panel. Uh, in normal condition, the inverter is gonna be outputting to the main panel. And this is also gonna be supplementing um, any critical loads that you have in your sub panel when the grid is up. If the grid fails, it will switch off from the inverter and come directly from the inverter, I'm sorry, for the AC backup to the ATS uh, for your critical loads here. Here's the wiring diagram, which is always important to follow. Um, you know, we get tons of calls uh, regarding the installation process when, you know, an electrician sees power somewhere here. If it's already going here, why does it have to come from the grid or the meter? So it's always very important to make sure that the, the wiring diagram is followed exactly as shown. Here's a layout of the inverter. At the bottom, you'll have an integrated DC switch on the left and it has tons of ports on the bottom uh, for your installation uh, configuration PV input. Um, here's another PV input, I'm sorry, battery input, uh, the communication ports, uh, backup for the AC on the output for the critical loads and the, input, uh, the output for, uh, to the grid. Uh, one second. Okay, so here's the layout of the actual wire box inside of the inverter. You have the ethernet communication port if you choose to use that or, or Wi-Fi, this being the communication board. You have the RS-45 communication if needed for the smart meter. Um, and then you have the battery communication here, AC grid, put, AC grid output here, battery input, I'm sorry, uh, backup output, battery input, and then you have all your PV inputs here. Um, these being the PV inputs here. Um, keep in mind, here's some information which is also on the data sheet. You, uh, you know, all residential inverters, 600 volts DC. Uh, here's another important thing to, to keep in mind. The, the rating for the inverter PV input is 13.5 amps. What this means is that um, the maximum output of the inverter is gonna be uh, based on that 13.5 amp input. We see all these new modules uh, coming to the market that are increasingly um, uh, getting higher than 13.5 uh, amp rating, which means you can still install those modules as long as it's below the short circuit of the MPPT. Uh, it's just going to mean that it's, in, it's not going to, it's going to basically uh, derate the module to 13.5 amps, um, you know, so you can still install it without any issues as long as you don't pass the 16.9 rating. Uh, you're just not, you're not just not going to get the full efficiency of that module. Like I mentioned, it's going to derate it to 13.5 maximum. Uh, here's the grid inputs, inputs on the, on the right. And then the backups, and these are all, um, uh, pretty easily uh, fastened uh, with the screwdriver. Um, the antenna, uh, the, which comes inside of the uh, accessory bags, plugs into the bottom of the uh, antenna, which is important for the Wi-Fi communication. The grounding screw on the left. Here's a configuration of the smart meter. So the smart meter is here, which, like I mentioned, is going to be installed in the main panel. You get a RS-45 or Cat5 cable. Um, going directly to the inverter, which plugs into the wire box here, um, and the two CTs, which will be me measuring L1, L2. 
So one important factor when installing the smart meter is ensuring uh, that the arrow in each CT is facing from grid to load. Um, if it's reversed, it's gonna give you inaccurate data. Um, here's another layout of it so you guys can actually get a better um, visual of the smart meter. That's how easily it's laid out. So obviously uh, G goes to G on the, on the connector. B goes to B on the connector, A goes to A on the connector. And then just keep in mind this slot, there is a terminal, but uh, it's not used. So you definitely wanna make sure that it's wired um, correctly. So here's the installation for the ATS, uh, starting with the output. You'll see here, uh, the output goes to the subpanel. You get L1 neutral, L2 to the subpanel and ground. And then um, you'll notice that on the input side, here on the output, you have a neutral, but on the input side from the grid and from the, um, from the inverter's EPS, which is a backup um, for the critical load from the inverter, there is no neutral. So the, the input comes in and comes back out, goes up into the transformer, comes back out, and that's where it creates a neutral. So this is a grid input. And like I mentioned, this is from the inverter's EPS. So normally when it's in, in grid operation, it's gonna be feeding from the grid uh, through the transformer and out to the subpanel, which is feeding uh, the subpanel in grid operation mode. And then if it fails, it will switch automatically to um, the backup mode through the EPS circuit. So here's the battery installation and the layout of the battery. Um, you can see here uh, the battery switch on the left-hand side cabinet. Then there's a power button, which is uh, used for forced uh, shutdown of the battery or forced start. And then the wiring box to the inverter on the left-hand side. Here's a front of the inverter. It gives you an LED display here. And then on the right-hand side cabinet, it, you're gonna have the expansion a wire box, which is only used when you're connecting multiple cabinets in parallel. So here's a pretty simple layout of the inverter. On the left, you're gonna see uh, the BDC. So this configuration is for an RO 6.6 kilowatt hour cabinet, right? It only has two battery modules, the first being on top and the second being on the bottom, um, on the most inner side, so inside of the, the, the bottom slot. Um, and the, 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 I mean, I've, I've, I've actually done demonstrations with various installers where they literally say this is the easiest battery that they've ever installed. Um, the battery modules themselves have a link in and a link out port and a PCS, which are all labeled here. These cables are already inside of the cabinet and are labeled as such as shown here. So for the top, starting at the top, the upper piece, the upper bat, and that's exactly how it's labeled, labeled. Upper bat PCS cable goes to the PCS port. Upper bat link out cable goes to the link out at the top. And you can see how it's connected in, in essentially a daisy chain con configuration. So from the battery, it goes in, goes out, comes back. And then you can see at the bottom, uh, lower outer battery link out cable and then lower inner battery link in cable. So it's pretty straightforward. Like I mentioned, all the cables are uh, labeled as such and then you have the upper battery positive, negative, positive, negative, and it'll be labeled lower inner or lower outer for the bottom. And then here's a configuration of a 9.9. .9. So it's the same thing at the top. Oh, one thing I did forget to mention, I'm sorry, is the top link in port needs the, the jumper uh, shorting plug, which is actually provided in the accessory bag. And the same here, uh, pretty much the same concept, upper bat PCS cable, upper bat link out cable, which goes to the bottom inner module. So now you're gonna see that there's three modules in here. You have battery two and battery three are now installed. And then this is just a jumper cable. So it's literally a jumper cable that's uh, provided and will be labeled as such, um, which connects this battery to battery three and then out again. 
And then here's the connection from the battery to the inverter. Um, starting from the battery of the positive and negative output on the left-hand side cabinet of the battery and the communication, which is an ethernet communication, which goes all the way into the wire box. You have the communication port here for the, for the communication and then the positive and negative here. So on the right-hand side of the, uh, of the battery cabinet, as I mentioned, that's for expansion. If there's only one battery, you have to make sure this jumper is installed. This jumper is essentially telling the system there is no communication past this point. Um, if it's not installed, it will give a communication fault. Make sure that the, the disconnect or the breaker, I'm sorry, is in off position because there's no power passing past that point. And then when installing the system, this is also very important to mention. Um, if the system is not commissioned, you have to make sure that none of this connection is made. Only make this connection when uh, the system is going to be installed. The reason for that is because the battery modules, if the system is not commissioned and are powered on, it can uh, drain the batteries past the threshold where they can be recharged. And here is the, the configuration or the installation of two batteries in parallel. Uh, you're going to see here's a primary battery um, and a secondary battery. The difference being that the primary has a BDC internally and the secondary does not. You don't see that BDC internally. And it also does not have the LED um, uh, on, the second, on the secondary battery cabinet. So here's the, the, the wiring or the configuration of the cabling. Um, it's the same for both as we discussed for the 9.9. .9. And then here's gonna be on the right-hand side, which, you, which is used for the paralleling function from communication to communication of both battery cabinets, and then switch on the breakers on both sides, and then connect the positive and negative uh, to both battery cabinets, which will expand the battery cabinet to 19.8 kilowatt hours. Again, um, as I previously mentioned, um, regarding the, the commissioning of it, if it's not commissioned, make sure that the disconnection is not made to avoid draining the batteries. One second, we're gonna skip over uh, that. So here's a commissioning of it, the steps uh, regarding how to commission it, um, which are shown here. Uh, it's, this is the safest way to turn on and off the system, um, which we don't need to cover, but it's labeled here. And then here's the app guide on the commissioning process. So uh, the inverter itself has a communication uh, board internally that creates or emits a hotspot. So if the local site does not have Wi-Fi, you can use the Shine Tool app to connect directly to the inverter's hotspot so you can commission the system uh, using, using the app tool without any local network. So the first step here you can see is you open up the Shine Tools, input the password, which is shown here, the direct Wi-Fi, um, go to set, find the, the Wi-Fi network that the inverter is emitting, which is actually the serial number of the inverter. And it's, that's located on the left-hand side of the, uh, the inverter. Uh, you're gonna go ahead and connect to that. And then the, it's gonna ask you for a password, which is one through eight. Once you connect to the inverter, you can hit next and it's gonna automatically populate all the data. So you'll start seeing data here. If there's no data, that means it's not connected. If there's data, it's gonna give you the nominal power of the inverter. And then you can click the auto refresh here and you can begin to access uh, the next steps for the commissioning process. Um, so here's the connecting the min, uh, the inverter to the local Wi-Fi network. So you're already connected to the inverter directly. Now you wanna connect the inverter to the local network. Uh, quick settings, network configuration method, input the username and password. Uh, make sure you select the server for the US uh, GrowWatt, which is server-US. Uh, there's a drop down menu here. And then uh, once you connect, it's gonna give you a countdown, give you a uh, configured successfully message. Um, so then you have successfully configured the inverter to the local network. The next step 
Um, and that's essentially the only part that you need if you're just installing an inverter. The next following steps are only um, applicable to a smart meter um, and battery and ATS installation. So in order to enable the smart meter, go back into quick settings, select power sensor, meter, and you get a meter uh, message here to show that it's configured. Pretty straightforward. Um, the next step being the enabling of the off-grid function. And again, this step is only able to be done when you have the proper equipment installed, which is an inverter, battery, ATS, smart meter. Uh, you go into the system settings, off-grid function, enable off-grid function. Here's enabling AC charging. So if you want the system to charge from the AC side uh, to make sure that your battery is always um, you know, full in the event of a power outage, uh, you're just going to go ahead and go into EMS mode, enable AC charging, and as long as the blue dot is there, you've enabled AC charging. Uh, this is for the grid code configuration, which normally isn't required. It's always usually 240, but if needed, you can go in here and change the grid code to whichever applies to your um, installation site. So now going into the EMS modes, um, here is the EMS modes that are uh, able to be changed if needed. When installing the system, it's always going to be in default mode self-consumption. That means load first. Priority is, to P priority is PV power to load, then to battery. If PV is insufficient for load, battery will discharge. If PV is sufficient for load, excess power will charge the battery, then feed excess power to grid. So that's the, uh, that's the default mode. You don't have to change anything. That's primarily what everybody elects. Um, here's some different options. If you choose to change it, time of use, um, that's basically telling the, the system to charge and discharge at certain times based on um, you know, the tariffs that you might have in your, in your uh, area. And then down here, you see the backup mode. This is to set the system to make sure that the battery never discharges and always maintains a certain um, state of charge, just to make sure that you have it um, ready for a, the event of a grid outage. And then for zero export, you can also uh, make sure that the system never exports to the grid if that's uh, needed. Here are the ways that you can change the EMS mode, which is pretty straightforward. You go to an EMS, time slot priority change, select the date, and this is just going to be the month date, or you can change it by, uh, I'm sorry, uh, this is for the full year, so one through 12 months. And then on the right, you're going to select the EMS mode. And then you're going to either select the load first, battery first, grid first, export limit option. Uh, then click enable, save. It's going to change whichever option you chose here. Uh, you're going to get a successful and then you're going to see the change here uh, take place. So now that you've uh, done all the commissioning with the Shine Tools app, the Shine Tools, keep in mind, is an app just using used for uh, commissioning at local site. It will not work if you, unless you're close to the inverter. Shine Phone is an app which will actually monitor data over the network. And here's the steps on how to configure it. So go ahead and download the Shine Phone app. Uh, click register, register the account. It's only going to ask for the stars, the ones in red, username, password, um, email address, and then uh, set up your plant. It's going to ask you for information regarding the plant address, um, you know, time zone that you're in, PV capacity. Once you enter that, you're going to select your plant here, add data logger, and then you're going to scan the serial number on the left-hand side of the inverter. Uh, make sure to scan the one that does not have the QR code. That's the data logger serial number. The one that has a QR code is the serial number of the inverter. So once you scan it, it's going to um, then add that data logger to your system, and you're going to be able to monitor um, from anywhere in the world via Shine Phone app. And then um, here's some of the walkthrough regarding uh, the dashboard or interface for the Shine Phone. Uh, dashboard here gives you the data for the production of the system, today's data, uh, the revenue um, of the system, PV capacity. It'll show you if you have multiple systems online, um, you know, as an installer, you can see them here. Uh, it'll give you a layout of the link of plants. You can add new plants and parameters here. 
Um, and then depending on if the inverter is just a, a PV inverter or storage inverter, it's going to give you um, a different interface um, once it recognizes the battery here. And then it gives you the generation overview, environmental data, and then the local environment as well. Um, and like I said, all the information that you can see on the Shine phone, you can actually see over the server and a lot more. Um, here it'll give you the flow of the current, same as the app, but here you actually get history of the data as well, which you can, um, which you can actually pull reports from. Okay, so I, now I'm going to go ahead and start with the next presentation, which is going to cover the whole home backup. Okay, so here's the same system that we just mentioned. Um, now it's, so we have uh, the whole home backup solution that we're, we actually just released and it's gonna be available um, hopefully here in the US by um, July or August. Um, here's the working logic of the system, uh, depending on the priority, self-consumption being uh, the default mode, right? Uh, panels go into the inverter, goes to the load, then the battery, then the grid. Uh, priority for load consumption is a little bit different. First inverter, second battery, third from the grid to the load here. And then time of use charging. So first you get from the panels, from the grid to the load, then to the battery. Time of use discharge. And then we have a different uh, option for the normal logic for the blackout logic. So it's uh, inverter, grid, load, battery. And then for the backup load is from inverter to the load from and to the battery. And then the zero export function eliminates exportation to the grid. Uh, so here's the, two, the difference uh, between the systems. This is a partial home, which we just covered. It has ATS, right? And the, the, the required sub panel. Here's the ATS here. You can see the integrated transformer, the input, output. And here's the whole home backup now. Um, the whole home backup is uh, available to have up to three inverters connected to it. And each inverter will now have a, cap, uh, a maximum capacity of four cabinets to each inverter. So the scalability of the system is quite large. You can get up to 120 kilowatt hours of storage um, on one home. Uh, obviously, it's going to take three inverters and four, inver four batteries per inverter, but uh, the scalability is quite large. And it also has a generator input for um, on the, the gateway, and it also has an EV charger input as well. Here's a difference. Uh, now the smart meter is integrated inside, so you don't have that additional component to install the integrated transformer, integrated 200 amp breaker. A bit of another layout uh, for it. And then here's some of the working logic, logic for the system. Uh, on grid mode, obviously the generator is going to be off, inverter and the array for the battery is going to be pro uh, provided or supplementing power to the load. and uh, either sending power to the grid if, if needed. Off-grid mode, uh, it's just going to be completely off-grid here without uh, the generator working. Um, now, if the, the, the home load is, is more than what the, the inverter and battery can supply, it can kick on the generator here. And that, that new system will also have the AC coupling function to retrofit onto existing PV installations, which is also... Um, you know, something that we're looking forward to uh, because as I mentioned, currently our system is only DC coupled. 
So uh, this will give you uh, the ability to not have to uh, replace the existing system to get storage on your system. You can leave the, the existing system on there, connect it directly to the main panel, and then just connect our inverter and our battery um, and have the system uh, do storage. AC coupled with these, the AC coupled ESS without PV. Um, the system doesn't need PV at all. It's just going to be um, an AC coupled system, charge and discharge from the grid. Uh, here's the, the optimizers. It's com currently compatible with Tygo optimizers only at the moment. And then here's some other features regarding it that we already covered three to four MPPTs to uh, DC to AC ratio. It has all the certification NEMA 4X so it can be installed outdoors. Uh, here's some of the recommended connections on the inverter. Each inverter has three to four MPPTs and each MPPT has two string inputs. Normally it's only gonna use one per MPPT, but you do have that flexibility there. And then here's the different configurations of uh, the option. Like I mentioned, this new version will have the 10 uh, kilowatt maximum output in off-grid mode or the rating of the inverter. So for example, the 7.6 will have a 7.6 kilowatt output. Currently, the first version that we released um, has five kilowatt in off-grid mode, um, but the next version will have that uh, rating, the same rating of the inverter in off-grid or grid type mode. And that's going to do it for my presentation. All right, great. Thanks, Daniel. Yeah, absolutely. So let's get started with the Q&A session. If you have any questions, Please feel free to ask there in the Q&A session. We'll get to as many as you can, and we'll follow up by email if we can't get over everything. We are getting uh, late on the hour here, but we'll do our best to answer what we can now. Uh, you can also email our sales team at info at for more information and pricing. And as I mentioned before, the webinar is being recorded, and we'll send you a link in a follow-up email and uh, hopefully the slides as well. I saw a question regarding that. Um, and again, uh, thanks, uh, Daniel, for all of that. And uh, first question here, I'm going to jump over to uh, Aristotle looking at information on the 400 volt battery system versus the 48 volt uh, nominal voltage on that spec sheet. Um, I know you have the SPH series and the MIN series inverters. If you could just touch on the differences there and also uh, maybe some of the U.S. certifications relevant. Yeah, absolutely. So the SPH is our 48 volt solution. Our, our MIN um, XHUS is our 400 volt solution. Uh, the SPH was our first uh, solution that we released. It was at 48 volts and it, you know, it has tons of disadvantages compared to the new solution, primarily being the capacity. It's only from three to 6K maximum. Off-grid output is only 3.6 kilowatts. Um, really, the only advantage that that system has is that it's compatible with 48 volt batteries. Other than that, um, you know, it's 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 older technology. You know, it's a system that's still being used a ton in Latin America because um, you know it's able to be installed with other uh, battery types and other battery suppliers. Um, that's probably the only advantage that it has over the new. Uh, system, but yeah, uh, yeah, it's still compatible with our 48 volt batteries as well. Great, thanks. Uh, so next question I'll jump to. Um, Mike West is curious uh, with the min and an aero battery. Uh, if we have a cloud pass over in the daytime and it switches from charging to discharging, he was just wondering um, how long that switch would take from uh, charge to discharge? Uh, the switching for the priority modes is instantaneously. So, uh, you know, I, I, I don't have the exact number, but it's it should be under a second or so. Um, it's pretty quick um, as far as a priority change mode. All right. And uh, another question 
from John, what is the power capacity of your auto transformer? So we have two different options. The one that we've been using up to date is a five kilowatt option. Uh, we also have an 11.4 that isn't as readily available. Uh, the reason for that is because the, the, the first solution that we've had up to date is, is has a maximum output of five kilowatts from the battery or PV in off-grid mode. So there wasn't really a necessity to have a larger uh, ATS. Now with the release of our second generation, uh, which will be available hopefully, like I mentioned in July or August, uh, that will be increased to up to 11.4, uh, right? So we will have an 11.4. It's the one that we already have and we'll have it in stock um, like I mentioned, hopefully in, in July or August. Okay, and uh, Mike had a follow-up question. I think you basically answered it here, but it was mentioned that the backup rating would be increased from five kilowatt to the inverter rating. Uh, in, is this only for new inverters or is this a software upgrade? I think basically you've explained it there that it's that 11.4. Yeah, so unfortunately it's not just a, a firmware update. I wish it was. Uh, it's firmware and hardware uh, related, not only from the inverter side, but also from the battery side. Um, so, you know, that's unfortunate part about it, but, you know, um, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely going to have to be, uh, only on the newer version. Okay. And Aristotle just followed up with, uh, his previous question. Um, he's wondering the transfer time for whole home switchover. I think that's similar to the cloud passing over. It would be that instantaneous. Yeah. So it's. I believe I, I don't have the exact data. I, I don't think it's UPS rated. So it's a little longer than UPS. I believe, I don't, I don't even want to misspeak, but I know it's a little slower than UPS. You're not going to notice it, but it's not UPS rated. Okay. And uh, Mike's asking, does the, uh, the SYN 200 TL XH prevent reverse power of the generator? Yes, absolutely. Great. Uh, okay. A bunch of questions pouring in here. I'll try and uh, pick what we can and uh, we'll hit the rest offline. Uh, there is Gail who's requesting uh, details on the method. Uh, remote method for rapid shutdown and disabling of the battery? Yeah, so currently uh, we comply with a couple different options. It's Tygo and APS. Uh, Tygo primarily is, is what everybody is using. Um, that's the current uh, stock that we've actually been shipping to the US. Our inverters have an integrated, um, and that's something that I actually regret not commenting on earlier but the inverters have an internal RSS uh, transmitter built into the wire box, which will help manage that rapid shutdown for just a TS4F um, MLPEs. If you need the, the uh, TS4Os, it also requires a CCA uh, kit with the tap. All right. Uh, and John's now asking uh, the battery COM port, uh, does it support CAN bus? Yeah, absolutely. All right. Uh, and Russell is asking the Shine app, does that have data history? I think he's asking if uh, it has kind of a history on the system status and output. Absolutely. Yeah, I believe it. I believe it still has three months of history. Um, I don't recall 100%, but that's another advantage that our system has. And actually, I didn't speak so much to uh, the, the different platforms. So one real cool thing about our monitoring software is there's three different levels, end user, installer, distributor. Um, so you get a lot of different access. Uh, you, you know, sometimes you don't want the end user getting in there and messing with uh, certain parameters that they're not you know, intended for. Um, so, uh, yeah, it keeps the history. And then sometimes where you don't have an actual, uh, uh, Wi-Fi network, you can actually go there physically, create a network with your phone, connect the inverter, and it will update, you know, the past month or two of data as well. So that, that's, uh, you know, a pretty neat feature as well. Okay. So I, a couple questions pop up here about, uh, CSA certification for Canada. Is there a timeline for that or is that in the works? Yes, absolutely. Uh, I believe it should be done. Um, I believe it's in the next two months, I, if I'm not mistaken. 
but I'll have to circle back on that. All right. Um, let's see what else we have here. How many amps can you back up? I, th I think we kind of hit on that earlier with the five kilowatt and 1.4 there. Uh, we can share the uh, data sheets on those uh, for anyone interested. Uh, also got oh, are you able to provide uh, product support in uh, Spanish? Are any of those documents available in Spanish? Absolutely. Yeah, um, we actually have a pretty large team in Mexico, um, in Colombia, that handle the Latin American Caribbean uh, market as well, which we have all the the data sheets, user manuals in Spanish as well that we can provide. All right, uh, just a few more questions to wrap up here, uh, getting to the end of the hour. Um, there are a few people wondering about the EV chargers. Uh, do you have any uh, direct current uh, fast chargers or um, uh, vehicle to grid options in the works? Uh, we actually have a lot of interesting products in, in the pipeline right now. Um, we're working with a few different EV um, manufacturers um, that, you know, to do the bi-directional charging uh, to unload from battery to grid. Um, I'm sorry, from battery to home and vice versa. So we have, um, currently we don't have a level three charger. We have level one, level two um, without UL certification though. Um, so that product has been released uh, I believe it's two years now that it's been on, on the market for the European and Asia uh, markets. So we're, we're rolling it out in the U.S. And like I mentioned, we're going to have those available with UL uh, by Q3. Awesome. Exciting. Uh, Somebody is asking if you could uh, mention details on the round trip efficiency in DC and AC coupled modes. Is there a difference there? And uh, what would that difference be? Uh, I believe it's 94 or 95% for both. Um, I'll have to double check the numbers. Um, and I think it's, you know, pretty similar to both. I mean, there may be 1% difference. All right. And uh, how about just uh, one or two more questions here. Uh, dirty grids, do you have a, uh, a filter or a frequency band uh, capability? with the inverter or the uh, maybe the transfer switch that would be able to um, handle grids that aren't on maybe a, the maybe the strongest frequency standard like we have here in the U.S. Uh, well, I mean, the, the inverters will definitely be able to uh, handle it. It's just with the certification, right? IEEE is pretty strict. So if it's out of, outside of that uh, norm, you know, uh, we get tons of that for Latin America, right? <laughs> their, their voltages and their frequencies are all over the place. So, I mean, it's not that our inverter can't handle it. It's the certification that, it, you know, it has to comply with. Gotcha. Awesome. All right. Uh, I think we'll wrap it up there. Um, there are a number of other questions, but we'll try and hit on those uh, in a follow-up email. So thank you, Daniel, for your time and uh, all those uh, great details answering those hard questions on the spot. And uh, everyone look for a recording of the webinar and hopefully we can get you those uh, webinar slides as well. Absolutely. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. Take care. See ya. Thank you.